Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's logic lesson, we will be learning about modus ponens and modus tollens and how these two logic statements are related. So let's get started with the do now. For number one, consider the conditional statement if p then q, and let's assume that that conditional statement is true. If p is true, what can we say about q and y? And for number two, consider the conditional statement if p then q and assume that conditional statement is true. Now, if q is false, what can we say about p and y? Okay, so let's get started with number one. So it says here that the conditional statement if p then q is true and also p is true. Now, when we are given statements that are true, remember that these are called premises, okay? So we have our first premise, which is true, okay? That's the conditional statement, if P, then Q. So as the second given, which is also a premise, okay, so the premise is true, we're given that P is true as well, okay? So let me draw a line here now. And we know that the conclusion must be true as well. So the conclusion, therefore, what can we conclude here? Okay, so let's analyze this. Let me use a different color. So let's say uh, we know that P is true here, okay? So we know that now if P is true in the second premise, Therefore, P has to be true also in the first premise, right? Now, in which instance is the first premise true in terms of Q, in terms of true or false? Basically, what I'm trying to ask, what does Q have to be in order for the first premise to be true? Well, if we put false here, and by the way, we only have two possibilities here, Let's say we put false here for Q. Can that work? The answer is no, right? Because in a conditional statement, a true hypothesis that leads to a wrong conclusion is actually false. So the only thing that would work here is if Q is true, okay? Uh, so what does that mean here? That means that now the conclusion is that Q must be true. And keep in mind that the conclusion let me rewrite this here, that the conclusion must be true as well, okay? So this is basically what we can conclude here. Now, it turns out that this is actually called modus ponens, okay? So let me go over it in detail now. So modus ponens, which is also called the law of detachment, states the following. If a conditional, if P then Q is true, and the hypothesis P is true, then the conclusion Q is true, okay? So this is actually very important to know that P has to be true. Let me ask you a question. What if our second premise would say that Q was true? So basically what we're trying to say here is what if we have the following two premises, if P then Q and then Q? Well, is there anything we can conclude here? Well, let's think about this. The two premises are true, so therefore Q is true. So this one is true. Now, what does P have to be so that the conditional is true? Well, let's look at the truth table for conditional statements. In which cases are the premises true in the truth table? So if you look at the first premise, if P then Q, that has to be true. So we actually have three different cases here. So let me highlight that. So here we have this case, this case, and this case, okay? What about the second premise? Q must be true. So if you look at this, we have this case, and we have this case that I'm circling here, okay? So all together in the truth table, we have this here, let me highlight this over here, we have this condition or we have this condition, okay? 
what does the p-value have to be here? Well, unfortunately, it can either be true or it can be false. Either way, it doesn't matter if q is true or false. Either way, the conditional is true. And that's the problem. So unfortunately here, we have no conclusion, okay? So that's why it's very important to understand that modus ponens only works if the first premise is P then Q and the second premise must be P. You're basically validating the hypothesis, okay? So this is here, the modus ponens. So let me give you an example of modus ponens. So let's say you have as a first premise, if I play baseball, then I need a bat. The second premise will be what? Well, you're validating the hypothesis, which is I play baseball, right? So let's think about this. If I play baseball, then I need a bat. Well, guess what? I do play baseball. Therefore, the conclusion is I need a bat. And that is the modus ponens in action. So here's a discussion. Maybe that's something you can try out on your own. How would you check or prove that the law of detachment or modus ponens always holds true? No matter what the P and Q truth values are, how would you test your hypothesis? Well, again, as we did in the previous videos, the best way to prove it or test it is by means of a truth table, okay? So here we have a truth table set up. So first we want to say, P and Q. So then we're going to write a third column with if P then Q. Now the question is, why do we have a conjunction here? If P then Q and P. Well, simply, if you go back here on the slide, you're basically saying, okay, we want to say that these two premises work, right? If the first premise and the second premise are true, then we have the conclusion, okay? So another way to rewrite this is as follows. If P then Q, okay, let me put that in parentheses, and P is true, if all of this is true, then Q has to be true. So that's another way to write the most exponents, okay? So if you would like, you can pause the video now and try this out and see what you obtain for the last column. Okay, so let's go over it now. So the truth values are as follows. Again, the third column, we have only the second row to be false, okay? Uh, now, if you take the conjunction between P and if P then Q, you end up with true, false, false, false. And finally, if you take the conditional statement between the fourth column and the second column, you end up with all true statements. Again, what does that mean? That means that if this is all true, you end up with a tautology. Okay. Now, what does it mean when it's a tautology? That means that it's actually a, a law. It's a rule. It always works. And therefore, modus ponens is a law of inference. So let me give you another example that will introduce us to the next law of logic. Let's say you have the statement, if today is Tuesday, then tomorrow is Wednesday. Now, do we all agree that this is true, assuming that today is Tuesday? Well, in that case, we can say that it's true. It's a premise. It's a first given Therefore, it's true. Now, the second premise, assume that it says, well, tomorrow is not Wednesday. What can you conclude in this case? Simply that today is not Tuesday, okay? So in this case, first premise is true, the second premise is true, and the conclusion is true as well. How can we rewrite this in terms of P and Q? Well, the first premise, we just write if P, then Q. Now, the second premise, we're actually negating the conclusion. We're saying not Q is true. Therefore, not P has to be true. 
So this law is called modus tollens. Now the law of modus tollens states that when two given premises are true, one in the form if p then q and one in the form not q, it follows that the conclusion not p is true. So that's how we can rewrite it here, okay, on the right side. Now, why is that the case that it's always like that? Well, you can think of it as follows. If you look at the second premise, not Q, we know that this entire premise here is true, correct? Because we know that every premise has to be true. Now, if you negate the Q, that means that Q itself, it must be false. Now, again, from the truth table, in which case... Can we say that in this case, the conditional or the first premise must be true? Well, the only one that works is when P is false, okay? Because let's say that if P will be true, just hypothetically speaking, then you will have a true hypothesis leading to a false conclusion. And we learned that in that case, the entire conditional will be false. Therefore, P has to be false, okay? Now, if P is false, then what can you say about the negation of P? That that must be true as well, okay? That's why we're concluding that not P has to be true. Again, how would you check the hypothesis? Again, as we did in the previous example with modus ponens, uh, you can actually uh, construct a truth table, okay, to prove it and to um, show that this law always works, okay? For example, in the third column, we have if P then Q. In the fourth column, we have not Q. Then we have if P then Q and not Q. Again, uh, if we go back here, we're saying, okay, the first premise and the second premise will lead to the conclusion, right? If the first premise and second premise is true, then the conclusion must be true. Therefore, we write it like this in this column here. Then we have not P, and finally, we have the entire modus tollens in the last column. Now, if you drew the truth value, you end up with, again, a tautology here, which means that this is always true. So we tested our validity of modus tollens. Okay, so here's a summary of today's lesson. We learned about modus ponens, which is also called the law of detachment. In this case, if a conditional is true and the hypothesis P is true, then the conclusion must be true, as you can see here on the left side. And then we learned about modus tollens, uh, that if the conditional statement is true, but then we have the conclusion to be negated, or the conclusion is false, as a second premise here, then, as a conclusion, the hypothesis is also false, which is true over here, okay? So that's basically it for today's lesson. If you have any questions, uh, please do not hesitate to post a comment to this YouTube video. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. And otherwise, have a wonderful day.